Hey, everybody. How's it going? First of all, let me know if you can hear the music and my voice. I see uh, K Pax in the chat, Mattia, uh, K Dog 788. Cool. Good to see you. Best chord charts. J A I X Jakes. Awesome. So, uh, yeah. Hey, Sam Fry, my buddy Sam. Happy New Year. Almost. Almost Happy New Year. It's getting close. I thought I would do um I thought I would do a live stream. I did this last year uh where I just kind of sat uh, sat around, answered questions and kind of goofed off with the Strymon Big Sky. Um people seem to enjoy it. So I thought, "Hey, let's do the timeline this time it's a year later." Um anyhow. <clears throat> All right. Hey, Lightning Trucker, thanks for letting me know uh, you can hear loud and clear. Awesome. So what I'd like to do is uh, I'm just going to fool around a little bit on the timeline. As I see questions in the chat, I'll go ahead and answer them. Oh, or if you want to talk about particular topics, maybe it's not a question, but, you know, just a topic or whatever. So, uh, yeah, we can do that. So let me look here. Hi there. Hey, uh, Walter from Portugal. Awesome. Greetings, uh, Walter Joseph Wife Audio White Audio is good. Awesome. K Dog, what do ice and duck mean on that? Uh, you mean on the timeline, yeah. So uh we'll we'll kind of look at that. So first up, what I have going on here is um what I have going on here is actually a preset. Um I, I like a lot of the timeline presets. That's my secret. Pick a preset and tweak it a little bit on the timeline and you'll be good to go for the most part. This is the pattern delay. So let me uh, let me just play a staccato note so you can kind of hear what's going on. So you can hear the uh, delay, I guess you would call it the main delay in the middle, but the repeating pattern is to the side. So kind of cool. And there are all kinds of patterns here. I will, I'm looking for questions here. I'm gonna do this real quick and then we'll uh, get into some questions here. So right now I'm on pattern three. Let's go to a different pattern and you'll hear what it does. Pattern seven. Ooh, that one would be a really good one for volume swells. That's really nice. So anyhow, you can do a lot with these patterns. Uh, really interesting. Typically, the higher the number, right? The higher the number, the more complex the pattern that's going to be going on. Strymon, um, in the manual for the timeline, actually documents what all the patterns are in terms of the actual rhythm. So I don't have that memorized. I don't know if that's unfortunate or maybe it's fortunate that I... Don't waste too much time on that. One of the nice things about the timeline that I've not seen on, I really haven't seen on too many other delays is um, the smear setting. And what this does is it softens the repeats of the whatever kind of delay you have. And it, it makes a much smoother repeating, whether it's pattern or you know, uh, shimmer, whatever it might be, it makes for a much smoother decay to, as the delay repeats, kind of fade out. Hear how it gets softer and softer, right, as it goes on. Let me pull that back here. There we go. just a really nice uh, setting for in particular volume swells. All right, so I've, I see a lot of question marks here. So let me go ahead and uh, 
check out some of the questions here in the chat window. Greetings again, everybody. If I didn't say hi, greetings. Um, so, uh, K-Dog, I need to get back to the ice and duck, okay? And those are two of the um, two of the delay types. So we'll we'll take a peek at those. Uh, let's see. Florencio asks, would you consider doing a power ambient tutorial? I'm not sure what power ambient means. Are you thinking maybe more like heavier tones, like uh, distorted types of tones or things like that? If, if you are, let me know. Uh, we can definitely do something like that for sure. Although I will say I'm not a metal player. Um, I tend to use distortion in a much more kind of targeted way. And I usually have it mixed with cleaner tones when I'm mixing, say, you know, multi-track uh, pieces, that type of thing. Speaking of redoing, are we doing another EP this year? Well, that's an interesting, uh, uh, let's see, is that Guille Carlos uh, asked that question. So that's an interesting thing. The the thing that's most interesting is, you may have noticed I never released my album, my EP. Um, I'm still going to do that. I kind of pulled back on it because I wanted to rethink some of the songs. And you guys are allowed to do this too, right? Uh, I wanted to rethink some of the songs and add in some other songs to make it a full album. So I'm hoping that that will release soon with those five EP tunes that I recorded last year. Um, as far as doing another uh, series here on the channel, I, I don't know. I'll have to think about that. Sometimes when I do these kind of more community-related series, they seem to be popular and well-received for one or maybe two episodes. And then I think a lot of people lose interest. So I need to kind of gauge, you know, how I think about, you know, is it worth doing for the, for the larger community here? Um, do I listen to anything? Uh, let's see. That's, is it coffee? Uh, do I listen to anything else besides ambient stuff? Yeah, actually I do. I love classical music. Listen to that quite a bit. Uh, bluegrass. Um, I'm actually, my playing style is actually pretty heavily influenced by bluegrass players in terms of the right hand techniques that I use for flat picking. Um, one of my favorite players is uh, Norman Blake. He played for Johnny Cash way, way, way back in the day. And since then, since the early 70s, has released just a fabulous uh, discography of bluegrass music. And he kind of focuses on, I'll call it old-timey historic music. Really, I love his music a lot. I also listen to fingerstyle guitarists, uh, such as Michael Hedges, um, Don Ross, for one of the current players, who's... He's a little bit younger than I am, but um, he's certainly a mature, well-rounded, excellent player. Very, very good. Um, there's some other newer players that I really like. Also, Martin Simpson out of England. I love his stuff. I would say he's a big influence on me, too. So uh, kind of all over the place, jazz. Um, I don't listen to a lot of metal music. Uh, I will occasionally if my uh, one of my sons... Um, kind of says, hey, dad, can you check this out? I've got, in particular, one of my sons is himself a musician. He's been on the channel here recently on a on a performance video I did. And um, so he'll he'll toss me a lot of suggestions for stuff to listen to. And he, he's got some good, good choices, I think. Uh, stuff that I would not normally pick out. So I really appreciate that. Uh, have ever tried putting, now what, says, hey, Bill, have you ever tried putting another pedal in the Timelines effects loop? No, I have not. Uh, I would like to do that at some point. The reason why I haven't is, if I recall, that's going to take me out of stereo mode and go back into mono mode if I make use of the effects loop. And I typically am running a stereo rig, but I think it would be an interesting experience or an experiment for sure. Um... All right. Of course, the coffee is the most important thing to get going. I don't drink coffee. My mother told me I would, when I grew up, I would like coffee, but I guess I haven't grown up yet. <laughs> I'm actually a tea drinker. So what I have in here is Earl Grey, you know, Star Trek, the next generation, Earl Grey hot, you know, that kind of thing. 
All right, uh, K-Pax, your question is too long. Well, let's see if it's too long here. Uh, lowest amplifier and guitar, solid state, two amplifiers. One... Yeah, that's that's a bit, those are big questions. What amplifier and guitar to choose? So I think as far as guitar, you really need to go and play some different types of guitars. Make sure you understand what you're going for. Do you want a Strat tone, Telecaster tone, Les Paul tone, PRS tone, you know, anything in, in between? What kind of music are you playing? That may make a difference in your in your choice. Um, amplifiers. I don't do amplifiers so much anymore, so I'm not going to be good at recommending any of the amps on the market. I do... Uh, traditionally like uh, small Fender amps a lot. The Deluxe Reverb is really great. Princeton Reverb. I, I've, I've used both of those for many years when I played in in a band. At this point, though, I think as most people know, I'm, I'm pretty much strictly amp modeling at, at this point because it's so much more convenient. I actually think it works better for stringing a lot of effects together and I can control the volume and keep it you know, at a reasonable level, so I don't destroy my ears any more than they already are. Um, Lightning Trekker, hey, Bill, are you familiar with Michael Landau? I have heard the name. I am not sure if I am familiar with his stuff or not. Uh, Play Stop, hello, Brazil, hello from the U.S. Have I ever tried out the Matthew FX Astronomer? Duncan asks, no, I have not. I have to check that one out. Um, it means coffee addict in Dutch. <laughs> yeah, okay, I gotcha. Uh, yeah, that's that's funny. Volume needs loader. Louder? Um, so the overall volume, uh, I can probably crank that a little bit. I don't want to go too far, though, because I don't want to... I don't, don't want to start having problems with clipping. Um, all right. Hey, Bill, there's a lot, uh, out there about, let's see. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Chithulian Dreams asks, Hey, Bill, there's a lot out there about layering delays, but is there is much value in layering reverbs? Yeah, I, I think there is. So I do have a, I believe I've got a video somewhere on the channel about stacking reverbs and what I do a lot is I will put uh, one reverb pedal in my effects chain, right? Record that. And then when I'm doing the mix down, I will very often add another reverb in the, uh, you know, reverb plugin in the mix. And uh, that one will usually be a little more uh, subtle, if you will, to provide extra width or depth or thickness to the tone. So I think there's definite value in it. You do have to be careful. You know, as you as you may have seen, I did that recent video on stacking 10 reverb pedals together. Obviously, that's way out there. But, you know, if you do it judiciously, you can actually get some pretty cool sounds out of it. All right. Uh, let's see. Tried running a piano plug-in. This is K-Dog out through the Nemesis and slow. It sounded really nice and lush. Have you ever done similar? I don't often run signal out of my computer into pedals and then back in, um, but I have uh, pun occasion and you can definitely do some cool things. One of the things I like about that is that when you record it, you've printed the sound and you're committed, right? So I think there's some some uh, value in that because then you're not tempted to go back and continually fiddle with it. So it could be a good idea. All right. Uh, let's see. Man, you guys got a lot of questions here. That's which is cool. Um, let's see. The Asker 3R. Hi, Bill. Love your channel. Bought the Big Sky timeline for a year now. Still exploring. Could you demonstrate a dual delay with quarter and dotted in stereo with distortion? Ooh, I can't do distortion. I'm not set up for that uh, right now. But we could do a dual delay. And I think I owe somebody the ice and the ducking delay. So let's check out the dual delay here. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to get exactly what you're looking for. But 
The way the dual delay works is you have a main delay. Let's make it a little faster here. So you can kind of hear how that's... All right, so you'll see up there there's a parameter called time two. And if we hit that, you've got a lot of different subdivisions. So here's the eight, one, one over eight. Right, so for each repeat of the, uh, the main delay, you get essentially eight of the following delay. Here's one seventh, and no, I'm not gonna go through them all. Now you can hear that's a little bit different. So if we do, half right so let's do let's do four three isn't that interesting kind of like that a lot actually. So that was a four over three. That's not the dotted eighth. Let's see, where would the dotted eighth be? I'm not sure where the dotted eighth is on this. I don't normally use it. Maybe the three over four. Did I already play that? Yeah, that sounds kind of like a dotted eighth. So that's that one. All right, let me do a couple more questions here. Then I will do the ice next, all right? Uh, let's see. My do Billy, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, I put the compressor after wah and fuzz. Is this recommended? I think it's whatever you think sounds good. Personally, I would probably run the compressor first because I like to squish the dynamic of the kind of the dry guitar signal. But if you like the results um, with a compressor after, I say go for it. That's, that's one of the beautiful things about stringing a bunch of pedals together is you can, you can make that choice and get something that sounds good for you. Uh, favorite alternate open tuning. I like dad gad and then I'm, I'm talking in guitar, standard guitar terms, dad gad and then C, G, D, G, A, D. So it's like dad gad, but the fifth and, uh, fifth and sixth strings are tuned down an extra step. So um, you've got a low C, so C, G, D, G, A, D. Um, so right now I've got a baritone, so, right? So it's not gonna be dad gad, but it would be the baritone version of that. It actually would be a low A and then a low G. Um, those are my two favorites. I, I, I play those a lot. All right, um, which amp mod do you prefer? I, that has, yeah, that's a loaded question. I've been on a one year journey of trying to move away from the Avid 11 rack, um, which is, has been my favorite amp modeler uh, for many years. I've had that unit for eight, nine, maybe close to 10 years. It's supported for another four years, which is great from Avid, but I'm, I feel like it's got a limited lifespan, so I feel like I need to move on. So I've tried the, uh, if you've been following, you know, I've tried the Line 6 HX Stomp, which I, I, cur I currently own. I also bought a Headrush pedal board. I had the gig board, but sent it back because it's got a mono effects loop. Uh, I've got the, Ro the, uh, the Boss GT1000, the Moore GE300, GE200. I've got a lot of options. Oh, and then most recently, I guess the um, 
the uh, Strymon uh, Iridium. And uh, yeah, there's a bunch of them. And to be honest, I've not really... Um, I've not really decided on one that I would say this is my favorite. Right now I'm running through the Iridium and I like it a lot. You know, I, I think it's a really good sound. However, I can get a good sound like that on my Avid 11 rack. So I who knows? We'll see where I land. Uh, all right. Yeah, uh, okay. Avila, is it good as far as amp emulation recording? Yes. Uh, Mattia, um, absolutely. It, again, I'm just concerned about the life uh, lifespan of it. I, I love the Avid 11 rack. Uh, in particular, the, um, the effects loop is really great uh, to be able to plug in your pedal board in the effects loop, and then it goes back into the Avid 11 rack, and then you've got the 11 rack with digital outputs, uh, balanced outputs, unbalanced, you've got a whole lot of options. So it's really nice for incorporating into a recording uh, rig. Okay, let's see. What else do I have here? Uh, okay. What strings do I use on my guitars? I'm a big fan, generally, of Elixir. I use those whenever possible. This particular guitar, this uh, PRS Baritone, the it ships with the Daddario, I believe the Daddario XL157s, which are 014s to 068. The, um, the Elixir Baritone set is a different set of gauges, and I don't like the feel of those as much on this particular guitar. So I do use Daddario's on this, but if Elixir ever comes out with a set with the correct gauges, I will happily switch back because Elixir is what I really like. It's my definitely my preference. Um, let's see. I've uh, been following you for about a month. Da, 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 da. Thank you so much. Oh, Duncan, you're welcome. So glad you're uh, kind of hanging out here and along for the... for the journey. How does this compare to the Grand Canyon? That's a great question, Charles. Uh, the Grand Canyon, the Electroharmonics Grand Canyon, is a good bit cheaper, obviously, than the Strymon Timeline. Um, it is a fine delay unit, and I definitely recommend it um, for what it can do in that price range. I really like the interaction of the looper with the rest of the delays. You can, you can create a really cool decaying loop sound on sound kind of thing with the Grand Canyon that I really, really like a lot. And the, the you know, the delay quality, at Electroharmonics tends to be a little grungy, like all of their pedals. And I don't mean that in a bad way necessarily, but they've got a specific sound, I think, that they go for. So the Grand Canyon is no exception. You need to make sure that you like the electroharmonics tone, right, versus the Strymon tone, right? Strymon's got its own tone also, and it tends to be very clean and pristine unless you're adding grit, you know, specifically adding grit into the sound. So a lot, a lot of times it's really, do you like the tonality? Like TC Electronic has its own tone. Boss delays have their own tone. The DD500 is great, but it sounds very different from the timeline. So do think about that before you make a selection. Um, okay, um, envelope filters. I am not a big user of env envelope filters, so I do not have a recommendation. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and get back to some sounds here. Where did it go? There we go. Let's go to, sorry, I couldn't see the, the little uh, the little light there. Let's go to the ice delay type. And this is where you're gonna get your shimmer types of tones um, on the timeline. Here's what it sounds like. Okay, so. 
What do we want to do with this? Well, we can change the interval. If you want your classic shimmer, you want to use the octave, right? But you've got a full range of, whoops, let's do this here. You've got a full range of different, um, did I go back here? Oh, I did. Sorry, guys. Okay, let's go back. Actually, you know what? I want to go back to a preset that's already got the ice set up. This one here. Okay, the other preset had too many things that were kind of panned with, you know, different ways. So you can hear a better, uh, better stereo image. Okay, so let's explore some of the parameters. Again, the first, the inter interval. That, I don't know what you guys think, that is a beautiful sounding shimmer to me. One of the things you can also do is select the slice of delay that's being captured. So you can hear how that kind of changes the tonality of the, uh, the delay itself. Then you can blend between the the standard delay and the interval delay. Which is also really nice, right? So you've, one of my gripes about shimmer is that it can be way too loud. So you could dial that way back. Second one I saw earlier was the ducking delay, which I don't use very often. But it's basically meant to have, it's kind of like side chaining, right? So when you're playing, the delay is going to ride underneath the, uh, the actual direct signal. bring up the mix here see so you you don't really hear the delay um, unless you're uh, you know unless you stop playing so it's nice for in particular for lead playing where you may not want where you may not want a lot of De you know, delays going on during the lead, but maybe you want it to come in after you're done. Okay, so that's the duck. To be honest, I don't use it a whole lot um, because I typically want the delay there the whole time, the kind of stuff I do. All right. Um, uh, David Knight, hello. I love the timeline, but ever since I got a dig, Volante and El Capistan, it isn't getting a lot of use. Well, yeah, I mean, those are great. Those are great delay pedals. Um, I'm still a huge fan of the Dig and the El Capistan. It's hard to get a bad sound out of it, and it's super easy to use. In particular, it's one of the better delays I think for Frippertronics style uh, delays, where you've got basically a short loop that's going to decay over time. The Volante though's got some great sounds in it, but I, you know, the timeline it, if if you want a Strymon delay pedal and you only want one on your board, this is obviously it's the most versatile. But if you want a specialty pedal, then one of these other delays uh, out of Strymon certainly are are good choices. Strymons are too expensive for me from Alex. They are expensive for sure. Um, absolutely. I, when I bought this one, and I did buy this, the Timeline, by the way, 
I think I bought this one in late 2013. I kind of had to gulp a little bit before I plopped down the money for that one, uh, for sure. Uh, so yeah, it's definitely a big commitment and you definitely, it's definitely, uh, like any other larger purchase, you want it to be the right one. There's no doubt, right? So definitely worth, uh, checking out and thinking about for sure. Um, Let's see, Duncan Kessler, my favorite song by you is Joy Comes in the Morning. Well, thank you. Um, what kind of guitar and pedals did you use and what was your inspiration? So Joy Comes in the Morning, um, the inspiration from that is actually out of the, uh, the, the Bible. And there's a verse that talks about joy coming in the morning. Uh, which I, you know, this isn't a religious live stream, so we won't get into all that stuff, but that's the inspiration right now, the Bible for the title, the, uh, pedals. I don't recall all of them except for, I'd have to go back and look at my notes, except for the source audio nemesis and uh, nemesis. And I'm using the pitch shifter delay, and I've got that set to a perfect fifth above the original tones and I'm playing in time, right? So I'm playing in, in rhythm to the uh, delays. Uh, so, you know, I play and then you hear the same note a fifth above. So it, it, I thought it turned out pretty well. I really like that song too. And thank you for, uh, thank you for the compliment on it. I appreciate that. Um, let's see. Let's hear some Frippertronics on that timeline. Well, we can do that. But to do that, we've got to go back to the pattern delay. And then if we go back to the pattern delay and set the pattern, whoop, set the pattern. Oh, sorry, I said pattern, I meant dual. We have to go to the dual delay and then if we go to the time two pattern and turn it all the way to eight slash one, that will give that will give us up to 20 seconds of decay time. So then if we turn it up to two and a half seconds, and then if I play it, let's see if it actually works here. Now you're hearing a delay that's sooner than 20 seconds but that's because i've got the mix there we go now i just play it again and hopefully it'll show up here at some point uh, but it's a super long delay and so you can so eventually those other notes are going to come in, right? So that's how you can play with a 20 second loop and kind of do Frippertronics kind of stuff. There we go. Unfortunately, again, I don't have distortion set up here. There we go. Let me turn that down a little bit. So anyhow. It's kind of cool, um, but it's definitely worth, I think, also using a reverb um, after it so you get a little more ambience to the overall tone. All right, let's see, what else do we have here? Uh, Napalm, well said, wondering if Dig would complement Volante or should use the timeline for its extended flexibility. Well, if you want two specialist delays, right? So the Volante is a specialist in tape style. I think we need to get rid of that. It's driving me up the wall there. Um, the Volante is kind of a specialist in tape style delays, right? And the Dig is a specialist in the pattern delays. So if you're looking for the most flexibility, you might you know, with those two styles and only those two things, you might want to go with the dig and the volante. But if you're looking for lots of tape options and then maybe have a general purpose delay, that would be the timeline in the volante. So it's really, you know, think about the feature sets of each one. Okay. Uh, let's see. Um, 
Hi, Bill. Merry Christmas. Hey, Illuminaz, and Happy New Year. Have you used an EAX, EHX memory boy? No, I have not. I'll have to check it out sometime. Uh, I'm not sure how to pronounce his name, but hey, Bill, I'm searching for a non-metal baritone below 800 bucks for around a year now. Do you have any suggestions? Yeah, this one right here. In the U.S., you, I haven't checked them lately, but they used to be like 749 USD, so just below that 800. This is not a metal baritone. This is not a design for metal music. It's got P90 pickups on it, right? So, um, so I would say this one is the one to consider for sure. And that is one thing that annoys me a little bit about a lot of the baritones. Again, for you metal guys out there, I'm not saying anything negative about the style at all. But it is a bit of a shame that, that the bulk of the baritones are only focused on that style. Um, in addition, the seven strings and eight string guitars tend to be really optimized for metal styles of music. And I think it would be nice if... There were more options that were maybe more general purpose, if that makes sense. Uh, let's see. Um, did I ever own a Metal Zone? No. I owned a 1980s, late 80s or early 90s heavy metal, Boss Heavy Metal. Um, it was unfortunately by one of my children destroyed by getting hooked up to an incorrect power supply. <laughs> but it was a pretty cool pedal. Uh, yeah, not bad, but I, I've never played a Metal Zone. Um, can you make it sound like a Yamaha UD Stomp? Hmm. No, I don't think so. Because you don't have the same kind of control of each of the eight delay lines. With the pattern delay uh, style that we looked at earlier, you m and you might be able to get some patterns that kind of move into the UD stomp kind of range of possibilities. Um, in particular, if you add some modulation into it, but you're not gonna get that same interplay of those two, of those eight individual delay lines that are completely and totally independently configurable. I, I've never seen anything quite like the UD Stomp before, so. But you can get some really good sounds out of it. Um, <laughs> please help me. I need to choose between the Boss DD7 or the TC Electronic Flashback 2. Well, I've never played the DD7. I've got a DD2, I think. DD3, maybe. It's an old one, um, you know, from the 80s, made in Japan. Um, but I think it really depends on what features you're looking for. So if you like the sound of boss delays, um, the DD7 certainly is a workhorse delay. If you like having the option of tone prints and being able to pop those into your delay pedal um, and like the kind of the out of the box settings of the uh, flashback too. Um, also, if you like having that mash pedal, kind of the built in expression pedal, um, then that's going to be a better choice. So uh, as I have often suggest, if you're buying online, I can't speak for other countries, but if you're buying online and, and you're in the U.S., it's pretty easy to use one of the major retailers that, you know, has a good return policy, buy a couple and send the ones back you don't like. I do that all the time. Really, I do it all the time. And it's a good way to, um, to make sure that what you purchase is what you actually want. Um... Can, Jason says, can you give a rundown of your stereo signal chain? Are you running dual amps? Hey, Jason. No, I don't run dual amps, so I'm an amp modeler kind of guy, as strictly amp modelers. So um, what I typically, what I'm doing today is I'm running into a compressor into the Strymon Iridium amp modeler pedal, 
and I'm just I'm actually running the uh, the mono out of that into a um, into a volume pedal, right? And then out of that volume pedal, I'm running a mono signal into the Strymon timeline, and the stereo outputs directly into my um, into my uh, computer audio interface. So that's that's what I'm doing with that one. Okay. Um, let's see. Yeah, we'll go back to that one. I like that one. One of the nice things about this, the uh, timeline is the repeats. Many of the repeats don't get too out of control, so you can set up a lot of uh, delay repeats. And if you add in grit, if you add in grit and modulation, you can get a really kind of cool evolving set of repeats. That maybe wasn't the best option with the ice, but nonetheless. All right, uh, let's see. Hello and Merry Christmas. Hello, Nicholas. Uh, pattern delay, yep. Uh, is the timeline still your desert island delay for ambient music? I think I did have that on my desert island pedal board, didn't I, as I recall? And again, it might still it might still be the one that I might select for a desert island pedal board. You know, if I could only have one delay pedal and I was on a desert island with electricity, of course, I might select the timeline just because it can do so much. Um, now, does that mean I think it's the absolute best delay? Not necessarily. I just, it's a great delay and it does a lot of different things, which makes it an option for a desert island delay pedal. Hope that makes sense. Uh, have I tried the full tone OCD? Yes, many years ago into an amp. A friend of mine has one. Uh, they're really cool. And do I spy the avalanche run in the background? Um, maybe. I have a big mess behind me that my body is blocking on the floor. Unfortunately, I have to use my the webcam on my computer for me, and it's pretty wide angle. I usually try to crop out all the crap that's in my recording area. I'm an extremely messy person. So yes, there is an avalanche run around here somewhere. It's the version two. I had a version one also. I bought that a long time ago, well, several years ago, and I, um, I gave it to a really, really close friend of mine and he's making good use of it. So um, I'm happy that it has a good home, but um, I still have the version two, which I really love the stereo reverb signal on that pedal. Uh, let's see. What's my plan for the coming months? Am I, did I miss anything? Yeah. Okay. What's my plan for the coming months? Well, I still want to do YouTube videos. <laughs> I do want to try and get a couple of albums out in 2020. That's one of my goals. I, I need to get more. I really want to get more released music out to the streaming music services. Um, I'm also, let me get your thoughts on this. I'm also thinking about re igniting if you will that older series that i did called how to play ambient guitar i've been thinking about kind of a re uh, revisiting some of those topics and because i've learned more right about a lot of the topics um, and calling it um, ambient guitar basics right i want it to be a separate series so i'm thinking about that also uh, starting sometime in january but yeah leave a comment let me know what you think about that um, and if you have any suggestions, definitely leave me a comment, shoot me an email, um, you know, wherever, uh, just let me know what you think. Um, and I'll be happy to, to consider it. 
Also, um, I'll know, I know I'm opening a, uh, opening up a can of worms, but any pedals, I can contact pedal manufacturers. As you guys know, I'm sure I don't buy all of these things. Many of them are given to me as demo units. What I don't do and what I've been really trying to stay away from are paid promotionals. Um, but, you know, when somebody gives you a pedal, uh, even without a contract, there's kind of an unwritten, you know, obligation, if you will, to to do a demo of it. There have been a few pedals, though, that I've received and I've written back and said, I don't like this pedal. I'm not going to do a demo of it. Um, so I've sent some back uh, or if they just said, don't worry about it, just keep it. But um, if you do have any suggestions, let me know and I can make some contacts and see if I can get some of these pedals in here. Uh, let's see. Thoughts about stereo amps? I think stereo amps are a great idea if you're running amplifiers. Um, if you're not running amplifiers, obviously an amp modeler with stereo, a stereo speaker system, definitely, for sure. I'm a big fan of stereo. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> uh, is the baritone harder to play than a Strat other than the fret spacing? Harder to press down. Why baritone, lower tones? Hey, Charles, thanks for the question. So I guess it depends. So if you're used to playing a Strat with 09s or if you're going with super light gauge 08s, then you're going to find these strings harder to press down on the, um, on the baritone guitar. Right? This, my high B string is an 014, and it's a 27... 7 inch scale so the tension is not you can still bend it pretty easily but you'll notice that I don't bend strings very often um, on this guitar or any of my baritones um, there we go uh, so I would say it's a little harder to press down but if you've got it set up correctly with, with the action neck relief you know just a good setup it's not ridiculously hard to play you know I would say it's equivalent to playing a say a Martin style dreadnought guitar you know with the 25.4 inch length scale with light gauge acoustic strings to me, it feels like that. It's probably even a little bit easier to press than that. This particular guitar is. Okay. Uh, do I... Do, 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 do. Let's see here. Ever tape two Ebos together for new sound? I have tried. It didn't work for me, but I did try. Um, do you have any favorite YouTube gear channels? You mean besides mine? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, that was stupid. I'm a dad. Um, I guess I don't... F con I am a gear channel partially, but I play music also. Um, gear channels... I don't know. I kind of bop around around a bunch of them. Um, I don't know. I don't know if I have a favorite. I would love to see the How to Play series. Okay, awesome. How about T-Rex Reptile 2? I've never played that one. Definitely think you how to play it. Great. Um, do I make money with this or is it just a hobby? Yes, I do make money. I've got a video that I posted a little over a year ago kind of detailing out my revenue sources. So I'm not going to tell you guys how much money I make because I'm old school like that. You know, I'm an old geezer and I find it hard just to say I make X amount of money. But what I will say, it's kind of it's kind of like working at McDonald's here in the U.S. part time. So if you can imagine that, um, it's not a ton. It's definitely a part-time income. I'm not able to quit my day job, which um, some of you know, I'm an IT consultant. Um, so that's, that's the job that pays the mortgage, pays food. You know, uh, my two youngest daughters are at college age. So we're trying to help them out a little bit, you know, all that good stuff. So the main job definitely help, you know, definitely pays for all that. The YouTube stuff though is 
enough that it's been it's been really helpful in buying equipment and um, doing things here that I would not have been able to afford otherwise, if that makes sense. Like I, you know, part of the reason why I have three of these PRS SE277s is because I made enough money here on YouTube and with the other stuff I do to be able to afford it. So it's definitely helping, right? But um, I don't know that I'm ever going to be full-time. Um, when I am, you guys, you can tell from the beard, right? I'm in the latter part of my regular career. If I ever get to the point where I can retire from that job or work part-time is more likely, that would be really cool because then I could devote more time to Chords of Orion and maybe use, you know, figure out some ways to make a little more money that way. All right, that was a rambling, long um, answer. Sorry about that. Uh, let's see, what else? Um, let's see, Miko, hello. Uh, hi, I've just recently found your channel and instantly got a feeling that this was what I was looking for, but damn, have I been missing out. Well, thank you, Miko. I, I'll take that as a compliment. Um, I do have, there's like six years worth of videos. I don't recommend that you binge watch me. Um, my wife will tell you that I get pretty boring after a certain period of time. I love my wife, by the way, she's awesome. But, uh, but certainly there's a lot of different topics here that um, if you're interested in ambient guitar, hopefully you'll find some of them interesting. Um, have I had a chance to try out the Reverend Descent baritone. I have not. Um, some of you know I have the Reverend um, Airwave 12 string. The Descent baritone hasn't appealed to me because the scale length is not long enough for me. It's, I believe, a 26 and a half inch scale length. The lowest I'm willing to go with a baritone is 27 inches. This is better at 27.7. My acoustic baritone, my main acoustic baritone is a 29 inch length scale. I really prefer the, you know, having a bit longer scale length because you get more tension on the strings, which means you have better options if you do want to down tune the baritone uh, without going to a heavier gauge string, which is, you know, if you go heavier than this, you're kind of getting into bass string territory, which I don't want to do. Um, Thoughts on Eventide Time Factor? It's a classic. To be honest, I've never played one. I've never even seen one in person, but certainly it is a classic pedal and I'm sure it's well worth considering. Do I listen to any metal music? Uh, not really. Um, not normally, um, unless someone recommends that I listen to a specific tune. It's just, I, there's nothing wrong with metal. But you guys got to remember, I grew, my formative years were before metal, or my formative years were when the only metal band around was the original Black Sabbath, right? Who were one of the bands that kind of were the seed of all metal styles, right? And so that, that was it. So I, and I, and I rapidly got into, jazz and classical and bluegrass and acoustic styles. So I never really tended towards a lot of metal styles. I kind of missed out on it. I didn't really listen to it, wasn't aware of it until I started having kids. And my two sons who are into metal started kind of teaching me about it. And I was like, wow, I miss these guys. They're a 20 year old band. How have I never heard of them? So um, anyhow, uh, let's see here. Are you familiar with the German guitarist Ralph Ellenberger? No, I'm not. I will have to check Ralph out. Um, okay, jazz standards. I do not play jazz standards. I love players that do jazz standards well, but that's not something I normally do. Um, anyhow. All right, so let's check out another... Uh, delay type. I'll keep watching the comments, but um, let's check out the reverse delay. Yeah, so I'm going to make this all reverse delay, bring down the repeats. 
Okay, so it is a reverse delay, as you can see. But if we look at the parameters again, one of the things that's interesting is you'll see there's a smear option. And that was off. Let me go ahead and smear it all the way. Let's see what we get. So we'll have to add some repeats in there. I like, I actually like the smear on the reverse a lot because it softens all the repeats. If you don't have the smear on, those repeats can kind of get in the way of the main reversed uh, delay, you know, that initial repeat. <laughs> Let's see what else we get here. You get a high pass, you get your tap division, that's kind of common. So it's really just the smear. All right, yeah, I, I like that reverse a lot. I did a reverse delay shootout on the channel here. If you kind of search, you'll find it. Uh, the timeline was one, but I looked at, I, don't know, I think, six of them maybe. So it's really interesting how different pedal manufacturers interpret reverse delays. Some of them are better, I think, for playing, you know, fully wet, and some are better for playing kind of more in the background. All right, let's see some more questions here. Um, any plugins you might recommend for making guitar pads? Oh, yeah. Um, so I'm a Logic user. I'm on Mac, um, but the uh, as I think about just general plugins, Valhalla Shimmer and the Valhalla Delay, those two plugins I use them constantly. Um, they're amazing plugins. I also like the um, the Audio Damage EOS 2 Reverb. I also like the uh, Valhalla um, Uber Mod and the uh, is it the Super Modulator? It's the it's actually a free one from uh, Valhalla. They're just really fabulous. I use those a lot. You if you listen carefully and you're familiar with those plugins, you'll find them blended in a lot in my mixes. They're really good for creating very long, if you want, very long pad types of sounds. Uh, okay, bass six style guitars. Yes, I have an Ibanez SRC6. It is a 30 inch short scale bass that uses the same uh, gauge strings as the actual Fender bass six. The pickups are active in terms of active EQ. Um, and I think it's a pretty fabulous instrument. It's a walnut body, really nice, nice build on it. I've done a number of videos here on the channel of it. Uh, how many PRS guitars do you have? I have four. So I have three of these, these uh, SE277s. Two of them are the um, hollow, uh, semi hollow body with the P90 pickups. One is a solid body with humbuckers. And then I have the SVN S7, SVN7 um, seven string. I don't play that very often here on the channel, partially because I struggle with it. The string spacing on that guitar is too close to me. I'm actually thinking about selling it. Um, and if I do get another seven string or eight string, I'm gonna look for something with wider string spacing. I just do not prefer narrow string spacing. It doesn't give me enough room to play the types of chord voicings that I, that I enjoy playing. Uh, is the Iridium an always on pedal? Yes, it is if you're using it as an amp modeler. So it is an amp modeler. So if you're using it, you're probably gonna leave it on all the time. I know I do when I'm using it in my pedal board. Um, let's see, being a timeline center. Being that a timeline is a single delay, this is Ezekiel Plagio. Uh, sorry if I mispronounce your name. Uh, being a timeline is a single delay, but a high quality, would you recommend to add a second delay in the chain? 
Um, Yes, you may very well want to add a second delay. One of my favorite combinations with the Strymon timeline is the TC Electronic Flashback Triple Delay. And there's a lot of uh, performance videos that I've done here on this channel where I use that combination. I put the triple delay in front of the timeline and I tend to run longer delays um, from the triple delay and then a shorter kind of more uh, width style delay from the uh, timeline. So I do that all, I do that very frequently. Looping capabilities of the timeline, I it's got a 30 second looper built in. I never ever use it. 30 second loopers are not useful to me unless I can decay the loop for Frippertronics. But it certainly is a good looper for a 30 second looper and you can place it before or after the delay. So you've got some options there, which is nice. Um, all right, let's see what else do we have going on here. Uh, uh, let's see, Rockin' Dave Byron. I don't, maybe you'll, are you referring to someone else? I think you'll do great doing live gigs. My wife and I are renting out venues and selling tickets. All Ridge, it's a perfect time to do this now. So you're, th you're saying it's a perfect time to do live gigs? Could be. I did a live, my only Chords of Orion live gig back in September in upstate New York. That was a lot of fun. Uh, there is a possibility of another live gig this coming summer that I'm in discussion with right now. I don't know if it's going to happen. Obviously, if it does happen, everybody here will know about it. Um, my issue is time. Um, I have time for what I do here, and I have time for recording I don't have a lot of time for live gigs right now in my life. I have to pick and choose. What am I going to focus on? Uh, but maybe it is a good time to start playing out. Uh, okay, let's see. Uh, how come no Empress delay or reverb demos? Well, I do have the Empress Echo system, and I've done a couple videos with that. So um, part of the deal with these pedals is... Um, the number of pedals that have been sent to me in 2019 was, I, I appreciate it very, very much, but it's, a, it's just a little too much to use all the pedals all the time. So, you know, like anyone else, I've got kind of go-to pedals that I tend to use more often. The Echo System, I could see that being more in use over time it's got a lot of wonderful sounds in it it's a it's definitely a great a great pedal i've never used an empress reverb though um let's see oh this is a good question from p junior j uh do you use midi for program changes not normally, no, because I'm mostly here in the studio. I don't use a lot of MIDI for controlling multiple pedals. Now, would I do that in a live sit uh, situation? Yeah, I think I would, uh, for sure. Um, what is an ambient guitar venue like or where? Yeah, good question. In Philadelphia, I know, which is not too far from me, it's about four-hour drive from where I live, um, I know that there are there's a, there's a bit of an experimental music slash ambient music scene, so there's a couple places there. But once you get outside of that, I'm not really aware of any. In particular, where I live, it's pretty rural. There's not a music scene at all, so there's no opportunity to play ambient music at all. If I played in a bluegrass band, I'd be golden, right? I could play all over the place, but not with this kind of stuff where I live. But I'm okay with where I live because I can go and hike in the mountains, which I love. Um, okay. Uh, all right. So, all right. I am, uh, I'm going to, let's see, let's do one more delay type. Let's let's look at the swell delay. If and if 
If I don't get too many more questions, we'll shut it down. I've been, I've been live streaming now for an hour. But the swell delay is quite nice. And let's see what we got going on here. I'm going to reset a number of things here. And see what we have. Okay. Okay, that's the swell delay. I was not using a volume pedal. And by the way, if you're hearing a hiss, I am too. I'm not sure where it's coming from, so I apologize. Yeah, just a really nice kind of delay swelling delay and some of the uh, parameters you've got the rise time so how fast do you want the delay to come in so we can make it longer obviously shorter Oh, and you have smear, which I think really helps the swelling uh, kind of sound. Yeah, that's another good one. Um, I, I do make use of that one from time to time on the timeline. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, let's see. Man, I need to start a YouTube vlog so I can get free pedals too. <laughs> so can I can I tell you the story about that a little bit more? Because um, it, I started this YouTube channel in September of 2013. And I think it was probably 2016 before I had any pedal manufacturer um, talk to me about hey, can we send you a demo unit of a pedal? It was a long time. Um, and I actually started making, I actually thought, oh, maybe I can get some manufacturers to send me a pedal. So I actually had been writing pedal manufacturers for a while and just had been ignored. So I guess, you know, they, I had, the channel had this hit like a critical mass and size before anybody was interested. Um, I don't take it for granted, though. I do not take it for granted. It, I have a ridiculous amount of pedals, I fully admit. No one needs all those pedals, but I, I'm very thankful that I have this opportunity. I hope that in sharing them, some of this equipment with you guys, um, that it helps you out as you're thinking about purchasing um, or obtaining certain pedals. So that's really the only reason why I do it, you know. But it... The free pedals are kind of fun. Yeah, I, I, I admit. I admit. Fully admit it. Uh, Taylor, are you or have you ever been open to collaboration? Well, I guess it depends on what you mean by collaboration. Um, I have done a few collaboration videos here on the channel, and they've been fun. In particular, Antoine Michaud and uh, Perry Frank. I did collaborations with them. That was a lot of fun. It's a lot of work, though, um, for me, because it takes me outside of my normal routine of creating videos and recording music. So I don't do it very often. I've not done any collaborations with people on uh, Chords of Orion albums, um, with the exception of a friend of mine who plays piano. She played a few pieces on my Nightfall album, which was from... 2016, if I recall. Um, but other than that, uh, no, not. Oh, and my friend Jim, uh, my friend Jim, who who I've played with uh, music with for the last 40 years. Uh, my last album um, featured a track with him playing bass on that uh, particular tune. But other than that, no, no collaborations at this point. David Sylvian, love David Sylvian. Good choice, Mark. Um, you said you have your go-to pedals. What are they? Some of my current go-tos are, I've mentioned the Avid 11 rack just as an app modeling system. 
that probably still I would call it a go-to, even though I'm trying to replace it. The, um, oh, it's not within reach. The Strymon Riverside is definitely my go-to distortion pedal at this point. It really is. Um, if I'm looking for a distorted tone, I go to that one first and see if I can get the tone I'm looking for. Um, my Wampler Ego is my go-to compressor, but it's my only, well, I do have a Fender compressor, but I like the, the uh, Wampler better. There are some things about it, though, that I've been thinking, oh, maybe I could find a better choice, but it certainly is a fine compressor. I've had it for the last six years almost. Um, so when you get into reverbs and delays, it's more I'm more thinking what kind of tone am I looking for, and then I select the reverb and or, or delays that kind of match. The other go-to pedal is my volume pedal, and that's a Morley Little Alligator. I love Morley volume pedals. And no, I am not endorsed by Morley or however that works. Um, I just, I was really sad to hear that the little alligator was discontinued this year. I was talking to a Morley sales rep. So I went on, the first thing I did when I finished that conversation was I got on Amazon and bought, <laughs> yeah, I bought a, a, a spare uh, Morley little alligator for when my current one uh, kicks the bucket, whenever that is, although it is 15 years old. Um, do you notice that you can turn the encoder knob too fast on Strymon units? Um, I don't know. I've never noticed that. Um, I've seen your demo of the Modua device and I was stunned by its possibilities. Is it that good to the point of getting rid of some pedals? Okay. The Mod Duo, I would say, is a super great choice if you are looking to use it as a recording device. And depending on what you're looking for in terms of effects, it could, it could potentially do everything you might want it to do. I don't think it's a very strong pedal for live use. And if anybody from Mod Duo is on, I'm sorry, but I feel like it's just a little too limited. Maybe if you got an, an outboard MIDI control foot pedal, you could you you could have enough flexibility, but it's a really great choice if you want kind of a brain for recording for sure. Um, all right, see you rocking, Dave. I'm about out of here too. I'll get a couple more minutes and then I'll close down the the uh, the live stream. So if you do have any last minute questions, let me know. What do I think? of the Fractal Axe FX3. I've never used it. Certainly the Fractal uh, devices have great reputations. I'm sure it's, I'm sure it's great. I've just never used one. Uh, you kind of remind me of one of my clients that I record with. That's kind of why I ask about collaborations. Oh, well, thanks, Taylor. Uh, if you ever want a writing partner, I'm game. Well, thanks for the offer. I appreciate that. Um, Bill just wanted to express thanks for all I've learned. Well. Thank you very much for hanging out here. I really appreciate that. Have I seen or tried the Empress Zoya? Oh, uh, yeah. The Zoya. I have the Zoya. This thing is very... I'm going to hold it up here. This thing is very profound. And to be honest, I have not had time because to really learn how to use it to the point where I feel comfortable shooting a video of it. But that also is one of my goals for 2020 is to really kind of learn this thing and to be able to share something that's hopefully halfway decent with you guys. Um, I feel like I don't want to just do, you know, here's, here's a demo, right? There's so much I'll do, you know, obviously, you know, show how you can connect the different effects to create an overall patch, but it's super complicated. Um, but that's one of my goals for 2020. While this audio is slow or EQD Afterneath, you'll have to get some other thoughts on that. I've never played the Afterneath, so I have no idea. All right. I think, okay, so we got a K-Dog. Okay, slow. Slow is nice. 
if if you don't mind mono, slow's got some really good sounds in it. But just make sure you understand it's a mono pedal. All right, so I think that's it for this live stream. I appreciate all of you very much. Again, if you've got any suggestions as we uh, are looking into 2020, uh, either you know leave a comment on this video after it kind of reposts and it turns into a regular video. Shoot me an email. You can get my email address off of the uh, the Chords of Orion YouTube uh, page or the contact page at chordsoforion.com. Let me know what you think. And uh, I wish all of you a very happy new year. And I'm looking forward to the next video with you guys. So I'm going to go out with a tone and then I'll end the stream. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. See y'all. <laughs>